Music, particularly orchestral music, is often perceived as something inaccessible to listen to, let alone to play. Something belonging only to a very small privileged elite. But what if I told you that fun ensemble music making could be the answer to all of our society's deepest problems? First, before I go into my idea, I would like to do an exercise with you today. And I will be speaking about social inclusion through music, massive social inclusion through music. But I'm going to need everyone's enthusiastic participation for this one. The lyrics will be there, so we can cheat. I'll go, I'll go through it the first time with you, and then the second time we do it together. Here we go. This is a song by Gil Raldiris, and we use it very often in schools all over. My body, my body makes music. Body makes music. My hands go. My, oh. Go. My feet go cha cha cha. My voice sings la la la. Clap clap clap. Stomp stomp stomp. Cha cha cha. La la la. All right, we're gonna try it again. My body, my body makes music. My hands go, my feet go, my hips go, cha cha, my voice sings la la la. Stomp, 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 cha cha cha. Great. <laughs> Thank you. And I promise I won't make you do anything else again. <laughs> so I want to go over what just happened. A room full of strangers who have never spoken to each other before. We just came together and as a team worked towards one objective. Everybody concentrated and focused, first on listening, then on singing, and then on moving your bodies in coordination with the music. Some of you were better than others. Some of you maybe panicked a little, but then looked around, listened, and relied on one another to keep it going. And I think we even had fun once we got the gist of it. On top of it all, there were fireworks going on in our brains. Scientists have observed that when monitoring the activities of people doing music, practically the whole brain lights up simultaneously, especially the auditory cortex, the visual cortex, and the motor cortex. And just like any other workout, these are parts of the brain that will strengthen, and you will be using them later on for different things of daily life, such as language, math, problem solving. Now, imagine that we did this three, four, five times a week. We would create a community and a sense of belonging and friends while working on memorization and motor coordination and self-control, emotional regulation. We would be maximizing our executive functions all while achieving amazing musical progress at a very fast rate. And that can be an amazing thing for a child who lives in adverse environments. 
let me go back to the idea itself. Created in Venezuela in 1975 by Jose Antonio Abreu, an economist, an accomplished musician, and a visionary. His thought was that a child who is materially poor will see, cease to be so when he's touched by music, when he enters the dynamic of the practice of music, of making mistakes in an ensemble setting, of making mistakes, trying again, thriving, and achieving a goal together. He will be spiritually enriched. He will have the strength and the grit to fight and surpass the material challenges of his life. I used to work for the organization in Venezuela. And as a continuing advocate of El Sistema, how the project is best known around the world, it doesn't cease to amaze me how the idea has been applied all over the world, adapting it to different realities and different cultures. In Venezuela, in Latin America, the challenge is poverty and social inclusion. There are programs everywhere, in Mexico, in Argentina, in Brazil, in Uruguay, and most of the time they include also traditional music teaching and traditional instruments. In Uruguay, they have a wonderful tango orchestra. In Venezuela, they have salsa bands. Mm. And I know a program in Southern California that has uh, a mariachi music ensemble. Now, in a completely different part of the planet, in Japan, they have a Sistema-inspired project. And um, peer teaching is very encouraged. So the minute a child learns how to put the fingers in a guitar or a cello, he will be sat next to a child who's less experienced. So there's a community dynamic that's very vibrant, very often during the week, very intense. In Japan, they call it the program of joy, as they've seen that it has helped buffer the effects of this traumatic uh, episode. In South Korea, the program has many years now, and they deal with the symptoms of social isolation, such as children having trouble working in teams and later building on careers as adults, social isolation coming from single child homes, a lot of pressure from big, heavy loads of homework and video gaming. This can also bring depression and suicide. They're calling it the speaking program because they have noticed that children, once they start being part of an ensemble, they become more talkative at dinner time, sharing their thoughts and ideas and experiences about their day with the families. In Bosnia, in the town of Srebrenica, the biggest genocide in Europe since World War War took place in 1995. Serbian government forces killed thousands of Bosnian Muslims in just a couple of days. Today, ethnic Serbs and Bosnian Muslims live side by side in silent tension. Two brave young men started the program in 2013. And slowly but surely, the children and their parents running into each other at pickup time during the rehearsals, and especially during the concerts where the magic happens, have started talking to each other and interacting in a way that had been unimaginable. Then there's Sweden and many other countries in Europe. I think there's a Sistema program basically in almost all of the countries of Europe. Um, Austria, Italy, France, Spain, UK. Um, these are countries that have very strong traditional music education programs, many times, very often for free, public. But for some reason, they weren't getting to an important part of the young population. And so in these countries, they have created Sistema-inspired projects making sure they include and they reach out to that population of very low-income background kids, immigrants, or refugees. In Sweden, they now have uh, programs all over the country serving around 9,000 children. Uh, and two years ago, they created the 
Dreams Orchestra, an orchestra made of recent refugees. In Greenland, it's everywhere. In Greenland, the program uh, lives inside uh, an orphanage, and the kids from the city come, and this community was created connecting these two children that otherwise wouldn't have uh, probably connected. Um, in Austria, the program has identified that their beneficiaries, their families, speak over 29 languages and practice 12 different religions. That's a lot of diversity to try to integrate. And sometimes school is not enough. And the streets sometimes are not the best place. So the idea here is to kidnap the kids' free time, so they're not in the streets, but they're in this created community doing something that makes them belong to something where everyone is in an evil, even plane. No language barriers, no cultural barriers, no religious barriers. In Spain, the program works in public schools. I always remember a young man I met in Madrid two years ago a violinist, a promising violinist, very shy, not doing great in school. He's the children of immigrant parents from Latin America, the kind of parents that have two or three jobs a day. We never really saw the parents in the beginning. And every time there was a concert, he would shy away and he would say clearly that he wasn't coming. And everyone would be after him, talking to him, convincing him reminding him of all the practice time he's put in and, all the re and how he's needed in the group. And at the end, he would always show up. Fast forward two years later, he just auditioned to the local conservatory. His parents come to every concert dressed impeccably and bringing neighbors and friends. So this new sense of pride, of belonging, of an identity as a musician, as an important voice that makes part of a whole, has spilled over, not only transforming him, but his family and his immediate community. Now, why are all these countries turning to El Sistema um, and doing these projects? Well, I think you might have seen the answer in our exercise in the beginning and seen how fun and transformative music can be. As authors Trisha Tunstall and Eric Booth have written, it is the first time that an idea from the arts and from Latin America, no less, is giving us answers to historical problems. Now, I want to finish with a video, very short video, of a concert that took place recently. Maestro Abreu, the founder of El Sistema, passed away a month ago. There was a concert in his honor just a few days later. This concert took place in Caracas, and 11,000 young musicians were part of it. Now, keep in mind, this is a society that is radically split and polarized by politics where people are living through an unimaginable nightmare of social chaos just to get through their everyday life. But this took place.
This is what massive social inclusion through music looks like. Intense ensemble music making is the unlikely but very effective answer for the challenges our children face today. I encourage you, if you're curious, if you want to get involved, if you want to make change, check out your local Sistema-inspired program. Volunteer or build one. Don't get afraid or overwhelmed by the costs. The first rehearsal back in 1975 took place in a smoggy basement garage. All you need is the will and commitment for change, and it will happen. Thank you.